You know, we haven't done too many typewriter reviews recently, and part of the reason is because I haven't been collecting as many typewriters as I once was. I'm trying to control or contain my over-exuberance of collecting typewriters, and uh, that's a, probably a subject of another video. But I do have a friend, fellow Albuquerque typist, Kevin Kittle, and he has been on a ultra-portable typewriter collecting binge. <music> Well, good day, everybody. This is Joe Van Cleve with my friend Kevin Kittle. Welcome, Kevin, back to the channel. Thank you. And we are going to do a little review of this ultra-portable typewriter, the Maritza Princess. Right. And the, what it is, it's a Princess typewriter, and then in the mid-60s, the original manufacturer of the uh, Princess stopped making them, and they sold the tooling or the rights to uh, typewriter works in Bulgaria. And then they renamed the typewriter uh, Maritza. And sometimes it might be called Maritza 10 or 11. Mm. And then they came up with some other different uh, models after that. And so that's what we've got. Okay, very good. Well, let's take it out of the case and take a look at it. Okay, so. And what you'll first notice, it's got this really cool clamshell case. Yes. With Ooh. really neat interior Red and fabric. black checkered. Ooh, that's sweet. Yes. yes, and it's got a nice little flap here for holding paper and stuff like that in there. Just really cool. Yeah. And so the lower half of the case then stays attached to the typewriter, although it's not a permanently attached, you can actually lift this off, right. but it makes it very easy to maneuver. It's got feet on the bottom of that. So here we have this, and you can see this one does not have any decals or nameplates on it, and I think partly it's just because the age of it, I think some of the decals and nameplates came off of it. And where I got this is in really good condition. Uh, somebody had cleaned it and uh, oiled it and made it really good. And then they did some touch-up paint here and mm, there. Mm. And so they did a fair job of trying to match the original paint where right, it had some right. wear and stuff. Right. It's a uh, pretty neat ultra portable. It's got the handle pops up like that, mm -hmm. which is kind of a semi-locking of the carriage. Mm -hmm. Great color. Yeah. And yes. of the ultra portables, it's a. Uh, has the advantage of being a bi uh, bichrome. Oh yes, a bichrome setting. Because yes. a lot of ultra portables don't have that. Right. And then it's got a very nice little uh, paper holder here that pops up. Mm -hmm. And just a really nice typewriter. And as we talked about earlier, it uh, is the larger of the ultra portables. The so it actually has a feel very much similar going to like the Smith Corona as far as size oh, yeah. and, and stuff like that and the look of it. So looking at the keyboard, um, it has a number one and an exclamation mark. It's a more modern keyboard, right? Roughly how uh, old is this machine, Kevin? It dates from about 1970, give or take a few uh, years. They uh, started in sometime in the 60s making these, and so this one dates from about 1970. It's uh, a handsome machine. It really is. Yeah, it's a nice good look. It's like that curve yeah, body to it. Yeah. it. Makes it really nice. Well, let's take a look at some of the features. Take us through the features, Kevin. Well, as we started from the uh, back, it, uh, we have a nice uh, paper support here that's spring-loaded and then margin settings there. And then it also has, when you come onto this side here, you have your pressure roller, uh, paper alignment lever. Mm -hmm. And then it has a carriage relief just on one side. Right. And then, it, it presses down. Do you like that press down versus pulling it from the back, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of hard to say. You know, yeah. my underwood has that same feature. Yeah. And, uh, you get used to it, yeah. So yeah. I'm, I, I think pulling from the back, but the problem is some of them when you pull from the back, then you mess up with another lever and you yeah. grab the wrong one yeah. or something like yeah. that. True. Particularly on the Olympia, as you right. end up uh, clearing all your tabs, <laughs> yeah, exactly, because you grab the wrong lever. So you have a a little paper bale that reminds me a lot of the Japanese portables, right? A thin metal bale that's been plated with the engraved letter uh, markings or line yeah. markings. And you need to grab the tabs to lift them up on either side. Right. And uh, it, it's a little more difficult if, you, if you're one of the ones that like a round bale. Where right. You can, doesn't have a roller on it. Yeah, for you instance, grab right. your, yeah, no roller on it. So it's not going to hold your paper down as tight. Right. Right. And then uh, coming to the other side here, what looks like would be a uh, infinite adjustment on your line spacing yeah. is actually a type of a uh, carriage lock. Oh, know? it locks the release, le the return and lever. And it's got some flats in there so, so you can't roll the carriage. It kind of locks right, that in place. Right. 
And um, oh. now that works pretty well. It has a disadvantage though when you're doing the carriage release, I mean carriage movement. Uh, the line there is you can press it down too far. Ah, okay. And that's where you can see where some Mark of the scarring up the case there. there. Now, does it also, would it interfere with ratcheting? Like if you did the, what is it, the two line? Um, would, yeah, it, would, you, would you be possible not to go far enough? I guess it still goes far enough. It still goes far enough, that yeah. Before it hits the knob, okay. Yeah. yeah. And then there, here's that's your uh, line spacing, and then this, uh, the back button is your uh, indexed. Uh, oh, okay. Infinite control. infinite control, but it always goes back to the original setting when you right. release it. So, if you are uh, typing on a form or something, uh, you're you're not gonna you don't want to flip it back, otherwise no, you, you'll lose that. Yeah. Right. You just leave that open all the time and, and, and hope and, your and, line doesn't sl skip. Just yeah. Due to, hopefully, you have enough pressure that it's not yeah. gonna slide on its own. Right. Right. Yeah. Now you do have a a little flap here, spring loaded for the paper. Uh, like a uh, like a racing table kind of like right, right. with some little felt pads underneath it. And then so you also have your index guide, and it's got a couple of slots here for putting your pencil in for oh, yeah. for doing that. And, and this this is tall enough that actually your card holder is, is okay. fairly good. Now I noticed the curvature on these card holders. There's quite a bit of room between the the finger and the platen. So probably when you're well, obviously there's no rollers on the paper bale, so you're not going to be able to thread paper up through it and go underneath the bale. No, you're going to you have, have to, have to lift flip the bale. it first, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then in the keyboard, it's yeah. got a standard United States. States QWERTY keyboard as opposed to a British one or an right. English one which because it has the dollar sign right. and, no and the modern sign. keyboard with the number one exclamation mark plus and equals right, right. full featured as yep. far as the keyboard yep. pretty standard that. American one bichrome oh yeah color choices yeah, but so. not all the ultra portables have that right and it even has a stencil position, but you're thinking, how often would you ever really have done a stencil on a, on, on a, right. a portable? Yeah. But they were the market for these, even though it's uh, ultra portable, I think they were designing them to be used as a regular machine okay. all the time. It's right. uh, heavy enough built that it should right. stand up to a lot of typing. So it has a margin release on the left side and your backspace on the right, and that's you know, if, if that's what you prefer, if you're a Smith Corona person, it would be the other way, I believe. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. and so you just have to <laughs> adapt to the typewriter if that's what you don't like. It may have that margin release because a lot of times when they show the double arrow margin release, it may be an anti-jam setup too. But in this case, it's not. It's not okay. The later, some of the later models were. So yeah, nice machine. Uh, I noticed the platen. Just looking here from the side, I noticed on the platen roller looks like it's not super skinny. It looks like it's maybe over an inch in diameter, maybe like an inch and an eighth almost, a little bit bigger than an inch, which is pretty good size for an ultra portable. Right. Considering, you know, some of your like Sky Riders and Rockets, they're, they're like maybe an inch. Yeah, three you quarters know. of an yeah, inch yeah. and they're pretty small. <laughs> yeah, the ribbon right. cover, yeah, we can take this, you know, of course that's on there tight, Yeah. but it just pops off. It doesn't have any uh, sound insulation, although right. it looks like they it may have, may have that because it looks like there's some uh, residual glue. Uh huh. And um, so it may have had that at one so time. So you have a smaller than standard size uh, ribbon spools. Right. These are adding machine ribbon and spools. Uh, no eyelets on them, and it's a silk ribbon, so mm -hmm. it has a nice heavy ink. Oh, okay. And a nice, and it works well on a typewriter. For some reason, the uh, spool on these is just a little bit large for some of the universal spools. Oh, the spindle? The yeah. spindle. Yeah, yeah. And um, so these ad machine works really well and just fits nicely in this typewriter. So maybe some European DIN standard of spool or something right. that you can't get, that's not an American standard perhaps or something. Yeah, so you, you would probably find that if you collect enough spools, you probably okay. come across ones that have the larger spindle. So these have the uh, anti backlash or whatever uh, tension arms that keeps the the real pack a little bit of back tension which is a nice feature and then the ribbon reverse is uh, based on uh, tension of uh, on the arms ah. to re ribbon reverse rather than an eyelet and so, so on this machine yeah. you wouldn't use an eyelet at all so it almost makes sense to use an adding machine ribbon right in that sense because you're not going to have an eyelet on an adding machine ribbon anyways yeah and so that because if you had an eyelet on here it would go through the guide and then it would hang up on the uh, ribbon vibrator. Is this a, a standard Pika typeface on this machine? Pretty standard yeah. Pika typeface. Mm -hmm. Good. And it has the rubber tube style uh, type bar rest, right. I see, underneath here. Yeah. yeah. And it doesn't, uh, when I got this, it had been cleaned up pretty well, so they did nicely oiled and cleaned oh, nice. up. And yeah. uh, just a real good solid machine. Well, I think uh, we ought to put a piece of paper in and uh, Oh, I think you should out. try it. Okay. You, should, you should type it and see what you think. I'm going to do that. It's good to use wrinkly paper, don't you think? <laughs>
I think it's good that we're, we're actually utilizing a full sheet of paper that may have been tossed out. <laughs> we're, we're being green. Well, you know, the fact that we're actually using, uh, reusing paper in itself. Yeah, actually, oh, what happened here? Oh, see, that's the thing. This thing drags. Ah, it's a little bit on the loose it's side. It's on the there. loose side, yeah, yeah, okay. Ah, see, that's where we need our... Uh, that's where our trusty Swiss Army knife. Our trusty Swiss Army knife is going to help <laughs> us out here, because it seems like that return lever needs to be tightened. But it has a nice dark imprint, I will say. That adding machine silk adding machine ribbon is really nice. Now, isn't it true that those adding machine ribbons probably had have more ink on them? I they, think they are yeah. more heavily inked. So if you're looking for an inky ribbon, and I wonder if this needs to be a shoulder screw. It's hard to say. It might be a shoulder screw. It may not. Because it looks like a non-shoulder screw with a Werger washer on it because the washer is not really centered. Right. And maybe maybe that's the problem is it originally had a shoulder screw that enabled it to... And it's very possible. It could be similar to the uh, Quiet Riders, which have a shoulder screw on the top. On the top. Uh, yeah, yeah. And if you don't use thread lock on, they have a tendency to unscrew yeah, and what... they disappear. And so that could be what happened with this one at one point. Yeah, that's... Because I tightened that up and now it's holding just a little bit better. So let's see if that helps as far as the car uh, carriage return. And one thing I've noticed that we had a difficult time with when we first got it, about the only adjustment we needed to make, had to do with the ribbon vibrator. Yeah. And, and we had to take the case off, and the whole actual mechanism is yeah. on the left down there. Yeah. And it's real sensitive the way it's designed. Yeah. And so I got it as best as I could, where the black has no red showing when it's done. Right. But if you go to the red, you're going to get the occasional little bit of black on it. Yes, and it's just a real, yeah. yeah, just right on the top. It's just a real fine margin. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it's just not some... as well made design there, maybe, or something. Yeah. Yeah. It just, they just didn't allow much tolerance between that. And that's going to probably vary by, by ribbon. So you might actually buy another ribbon that has a little more higher uh -huh. red in the middle I see. than this particular one. Right. So um, my impressions of, of course, there's no touch adjustment in no the No touch adjustment on this uh, one. But it feels kind of like one of those, maybe like a brother. I, so I know, think so. It, it feels like a brother. It, it really has does. That. It has that where it's a good solid feel. It's not too light. It's not too heavy. Or maybe even a Royal Mercury. Kind of that kind of Japanese touch that's a little heavy. A little bit of the heavy, you know, yeah. You know. um, relatively smooth, but you can tell yeah. that there seems to be a little more, a little less smooth in the feel. It's yeah. not that silky, right. beautiful smooth. Right. And it's not quite as snappy as some of the other typewriters. Like exactly. Like an Underwood Portable is at that really snappy or the Groma Cleaver right, we've right. had there. The only thing I found is, when you, is that the... For touch typing, the characters are a little tight yeah. right here yeah. around the A. They where sure are. I find myself hitting, uh, when you want to go for the A, you know, it's easy to hit the shift instead. Right, to Or catch even it. the shift lock, you catch a little bit of that. And Yeah, that's interesting. It is pretty, t pretty close. Yep. Yeah, so they could have spread that out just a little bit by bending... These and it looks like base. there's room back here in this corner. There'd be room for it. Right. You know, so interesting, yeah. So, again, a lot of these typewriters, it comes down to your size of your hands, your fingers. Right. You know, and, and, and the width of the machine's keyboard. They, there's not a standard there. They do vary. But what's interesting, though, even though they, it varies the standards, if you were going to type with this and you decide, okay, I'm going to type with this particular typewriter, it is well built enough that it's going to last typing. It's it's a yeah. nice character imprint. Right. You put in a full black ribbon here, you wouldn't even have to think about the oh, that's right. ribbon. Right. right. Or if you use a colored ribbon, if you want to type with a blue or sure. a green or something right, like that. Right, right, right. But it's going to type real solidly. You know, some people use the 300-page novel as the uh, how well this would do. This one, I think you would actually be able to do that. And your hand is not going to get that tired. I typed with this one where I did some touch typing for like a full page straight on. Right. And it um, wasn't bad. Yeah. My hands didn't get fatigued that badly. It didn't right. have any problems. It just kept going. The only thing I ever came across was those just a little bit of sensitivity yeah. Yeah. On, those, uh, I can see that. on those letters there. And, of course, it is a carriage shift machine. And it, I noticed it feels to me like the throw on the shift is a little is shorter than some carriage shifters. Like, it is pretty short. Like you don't have to push the lever down as much. But it's a little heavier because of that, right? The leverage. The leverage is a little different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and it is, it has individual 
uh, stop adjustments for each uh, side of the of the shifter. In other words, both buttons don't go down simultaneously. Right. One, one goes down or the other goes down. So there's probably a separate adjustment. And that leads to a question that yeah. uh, comes up on these is sometimes when you do the carriage, the shift lock, right. will the right one release it? Not in this and case. And not in this case, right. And right. there's a lot of typewriters are like that, where yes. the, the right button won't release right. your shift lock. And that partly has to do with that uh, small machine engineering. Um, yeah. How many features do they want to add to the machine? Right. And it looks like your vertical alignment is uh, is a little off, but not too bad. I mean, it, it probably the on feet. And I think that was one thing we kind of adjusted a little bit. Yeah, but we may not have gotten it completely perfect, but it looks like it's a little different between left and right and the left lock. Right. They're all different compared to the lowercase. So it still needs a bit of adjustment, but plenty good for normal everyday writing. Yeah, yeah. and that's how you decide, okay, yeah. how much do you want to fuss with it right. or do you want to write with it? Now, do you think this whole paint job was redone at one time? It kind of looks to me, it doesn't have that factory gloss. It no, looks kind of like it might have been sprayed, uh, you know, at one time. I think it's a factory paint job because I've seen yeah. some other pictures of this color okay. on uh, the uh, uh, Typewriter Works Bulgarian Typewriter. Okay. So I think this is a factory finish. Okay. Obviously, the touch-up is the not. The touch-up is different. You can see and, um, yeah. Now, why it lost the in the back, there would have been a, a decal or some sort of plate here right. that would have identified it as... Uh, and you can see where the glue was. Right. It was glued on the plate that would have said typewriter works. Yeah. Bulgarian. See, the other thing I see is like this this erasing table is glossier and smoother than the rest of it. And they may have repainted that when they did the little touch up and all maybe. that stuff. And, or maybe um, this is original and the other is not. I don't and, know. And I've seen photographs yeah. of the Maritzas where they had kind of a script oh, okay. label on a label here. There, yeah. And it, it kind of disappeared. And I'm just thinking, well, maybe just over time. You know, so, so these are just unglued. these are just artifacts of this individual sample. Of course, if you bought one out there uh, somewhere else, it might be totally different. You might have a different paint job or whatever right. condition. But I think it is representative of what you would find in a princess, because you know, oh, okay, you right. know, princesses when you see them for sale are often uh, on the higher end as oh, far yeah. as cost. Yeah, you know, they're more expensive. Right. And um, and, and, and they're a good typewriter. Are you getting your money's worth? Is it worth spending the extra money on, Princess? Yeah, I think you get a good typewriter. Yeah. Whether it's uh, any better than something that would be less expensive nowadays, I don't think it's anything better, but it's just as okay. good. So as far as usability, we, if you put it in the spectrum of ultra portables and you had to write a novel on this, let's say, where, where does this rank? Is it like middle, uh, upper, lower? I would say middle, maybe yeah. slightly upper. Okay. Uh, and then it's going to be the, the only thing that may make it go slightly upper is if uh, you uh, jived with the keyboard better. If it okay. really actually, oh, yeah. you, the way it feels right. feels better to you, then right. it may be on the higher. If it doesn't go that higher, then it's probably right in the middle. It's okay. going to be as good as a Skyrider. It's going to be as good as almost anything out okay. there. Very good. Um, it's not going to break, right. um, even though the adjustment for the ribbon vibrator was a little futzy. Once it's adjusted, it doesn't go out of adjustment. Right, it's right. pretty much steady. Well, very good, yeah. yeah. It's a cool machine. It's pretty. I, I'm certainly impressed with that black and red checkered lining on the case, though. Oh, yeah. That's pretty. <laughs> and it would fit, like, well, some of the, the qualifications. You put it in there in its case, um, in the satchel bag, in the right satchel bag, it'll fit nicely. Oh, yes. You know, right. And you can. You don't have to take the typewriter off of its base here, which you can. Right. Um, uh, but it'll fit in the in its case in a satchel bag without a problem. Yep, the bell works. The bell works. <laughs> Very good. It's an interesting machine. This is the first and only one I've seen up close of, the, Same of, here. of this. And yeah, it's an interesting machine. It's it's fun to come across models like this that aren't common to those of us in, in the United States. In the United States, you know, yeah. Yeah, so very fun, Kevin. Thanks for sharing this uh, from this collection of your collection, this machine. I really appreciate it. And ah, it's great to see these machines. And uh, so uh, we're going to have another episode after this stay tuned uh what yeah. is what is coming next you know next is coming because it's come up you know yeah. in the in ultra portable controversy oh is why is the royal dart so 
put upon? Why is it oh, denigrated? Yes. The royal dark controversy. And actually the royal light. The royal you know, light, yes. You know, and why is it, is everybody wants a sky rider and, and they look <laughs> and they see the royal light and they say, oh, that's not that great a topic. Oh, we're going to cover that next. Well, stay tuned for that. But until next time, you guys have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye for now.